Now, um, for today, we're going to be talking about uh, digital platforms and ecosystems, which is going to be sort of our roundup of what we've been discussing the last uh, couple of weeks, um, where it's going towards, where the future is heading of digital platforms and ecosystems, um, as well as basically, yeah, managing strategy in the digital era, right? And more and more that has accumulated uh, over the past years into this element, platforms, ecosystems, etc. So we're gonna basically uh, try to disentangle that. Uh, before we do that, um, here, 12 people have already uh, filled in the feedback, that's awesome. Uh, thank you very much, as Gamma said, but please do so, please be critical, uh, please be open, uh, take the time for it, it's very helpful for me. My job partially depends on the feedback uh, that I get, so uh, yeah, be as open as you are. It's anonymous. Um, today's agenda, Three papers we'll be discussing, and these are the topics. Don't worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, modularity is going to be our main theme. Um, but mainly what this lecture is about, digital platforms and ecosystems. Ecosystems means, right, ecology, the ecology of which in, in which we live. Our ecosystem here at Warwick, I don't know if you've seen it, but the water has been flooding. That's an ecosystem that's actually, we're not managing that well at Warwick, so... Half of the time I'm now walking through rain. Uh, but you are, we're trying to manage as an ecosystem, the internal world and the external world. We've been discussing the ten this tension a lot, right? Um, and that is affected. This tension has been there, has been coming up through the role of digital technology. And that, and that creates governance uh, issues. And actually technology and governance, those are another two topics of today. These are quite important uh, nowadays in, in managing digital strategy. Um, so internal, external, we'll remember this tension. Um, but before that, you know, about this feedback actually, um, I'm very happy uh, with what you guys have been sharing so far with me. Um, and I put this, uh, this slide in, this was actually why my slide deck crashed. Uh, but I got some great feedback here, which I was very happy about, particularly about the theory and I'm, um, um, therefore focus not only on examples, but also on the theory behind it so that I can really understand it. That's awesome, because today theory is modularity and I'm going to explain the crap out of it. Um, I'm really going to dive into it because I think it's the most important theory that I didn't learn when I was in your uh, position. So I came to the PhD knowing nothing about it and then I thought, why didn't anybody uh, in the universities I've been to teach me about modularity. Um, and here, I would like to hear your opinion on some of these uh, case study questions to learn for the exams. I'm going to do that as well at the, uh, at the end. I'm going to walk with you how I would answer an exam question um, as an academic, which I'm very proud of. So I will be doing that in an academic style for you. Um, next week, by the way, we're going to do a full exam. Um, so I'm going to put that online and we're going to be talking about it last year's exam. Anyway, um, modularity. Anybody knows what modularity is? Anybody's ever heard of it? Harrison? Yeah, um, uh, what in terms of brings to mind is um, modular smartphones, for example, that were considered to be a big fail. Modulus what? Smartphones. Modular smartphones, yes. So Mm -hmm. I have that in the slide later on, modular smartphones, a modular built smartphone, the architecture of a smartphone that is modular. Um, modularity um, basically comes from this, uh, this case story and I'm, I'm going to sort of try to, to get you around this. Um, modularity, there's this seminal story about two watchmakers, uh, they're called Tempus and Hora uh, and they make watch, watches. Um, and this was a theory or sort of an example by Simon, who we've been talking about, Nobel uh, Prize winner. Um, and Tempest and Hora both, had mo both made watches, right? Um, and uh, Hora made a modular design and Tempest made an integrated design. And they both had their shops, right? They both had a shop. Um, and um, Hora, um, every time, you know, somebody w that would come into the shop, he had to stop um, and put his piece apart. Similarly, Tempest did that as well, and he had this integrated design, and everything, every time a customer walked in, his whole watch, everything that he's been created, you know, this complex thing, fell apart, and he had to stop, had to start over again at the very beginning. 
whereas Hora um, had his system in modules. So every time he had to stop, only part of the watch broke down, the very part that he was working on at that moment. The rest remained. Um, so when he was at like 75%, he would lose 5%, help the customer and come back at 75% and finish the watch. Whereas uh, Tempus all the time he was at 70, dropped down to zero and had to start all over again. Um, so what this meant was actually that um, the Tempus was sort of more effective in what he was doing because you know he was uh, he didn't have to uh, stop uh, that often or he, he didn't have to begin all over again that often. Uh, and actually there's been a big economics theory on this um, uh, that has been developed on this. We're not going into that today, but modular uh, modularity in products, in services, in platforms, in any digital environment is key to making, um, to making a strategic competitive advantage. Uh, and we're going into that uh, later today. Anyway, so sort of just to understand how I, how I get this modularity thing is by looking at it as a continuum, right? So it's basically you're sort of on a degree, you could say. And if there's no modularity, that's the integral uh, design. All right, and you could say MacBook tends to do that, right? Um, it has this sort of thing, um, and it's, you know, you can't sort of take the keyboard out, you can't take, you can't replace the screen like you would be able to do with this one, all uh, right? So um, it's an integral design, it has hardly any modularity. Whereas this system, or you could say this system, is much more modular. I could change the screen, put in a different screen, I can add these boxes in, right? Um, it's a modular system, so it can add and change all these modules uh, all of the time. Um, whereas it would be more difficult here. So this is a more of an integrated, integral, integrated system, whereas this is a more modular system. It's built out of modules. Now, um, definition, as I was asked for, uh, modularity um, basically is building a complex product or process from smaller subsystems, smaller subsystems like for example the screen or whatsoever, that can be designed independently yet function together as a whole. The definition by Baldwin and Clark, 1997, a great book. Building, uh, paper is this by the way, building a complex product or process from smaller subsystems, smaller subsystems that can be designed independently. So by different organizations for example, right? The screen here, um, is designed by a different organization than the computer here. It isn't the same organization making this, right? We buy a cheap screen uh, and we add an expensive computer. That's typically what we do, right? Um, so, smaller subsystems that can, but together function as a whole. So if you put them together, they provide a certain functionality, right? Um, so the guide to modularity here, Modular system composed of modules that are designed independently of the integrated whole. Many interdependencies inside the modules, uh, but few between. So in this screen, right, there are many, uh, many interdependencies inside it, but not per se with the computer. In the computer, all of the components are working together. You cannot easily change that, but you can add a screen to the computer. That's not a problem. So many interdependencies in modules, but few between. That's sort of the thing to keep rem uh, remembering. Now, um, a couple of other examples, basically also, you know, one of the easiest ways to remember this is just to think of Lego. Very easy. Lego, uh, these are modules or blocks, if you want, and you can connect them. They're independent, right? As a thing themselves, they have their function. You can stand on them, for example. Uh, they have their function, but you can add them onto each other and create something, right? Then it becomes whatever you want to make. I used to be a big Lego fan. I actually still am. Uh, no, not really. Although I want to, but it's so expensive. Anyway, um, so blocks that you can combine and mix and match however you please, right? To create an integra integrated whole. They are independent by themselves. Uh, and interdependencies in between, but they function independently, and if you combine them, you create an integrated whole. That's sort of the modularity thing. Uh, here's Harrison's modular phone, right here. This was an idea um, developed by a Dutch guy, that basically we should have our phones, right? We should have our phones, but they shouldn't be integrated. So if I want to change the camera, I can just take the camera out, take the camera out, 
and add a new one in. Or if I need more memory, I can change the memory. Uh, or if my battery is going down in my old iPhone 5S, if the battery is going down, which it is, I just change the battery again, right? That's a modular phone, a modular battery, uh, battery in this case. So this was the idea. Um, so by breaking up products into modules increases flexibility for designers, producers, and users. So also as a user, I can change things to the product that I'm having. Um, and modularity can be created by standardizing interfaces between units. Right, so you're standardizing how you can connect them. Um, and you're standardizing that across organizations. Um, well, but the thing is, um, with this standardizing, it's always a little bit difficult. Um, because over time you want to change things, you don't want to keep with the same standard. And basically the easiest example that I could think of this morning was, you know, my laptop. So this was my old laptop, uh, this one. And, you know, it had this great USB. Uh, and I have this, right, this thing, which also has a USB thing. But, you know, then I got this new laptop from, uh, from WBS, which was great. But, you know, it has this new USB type, right, the USB-C. So suddenly this thing got worthless because, you know, this can't plug in here. So, so stop working again, right? I'm very annoyed, so okay, what do I do, right? You have to buy these damn dongles. Um, so, you know, if you now look at my basic setup and I made this picture three hours ago, uh, this is how it looks nowadays. Uh, this is my uh, modular system, if you want. Uh, two dongles here, here, I'm making the slide, you see? Um, so yeah, this is how this goes, right? So now you suddenly see that although it's flexible, you are sort of obliged to update it. So this thing doesn't function anymore without me changing all of the interfaces. So through these dongles, all right? So modularity works because you can update stuff. It's evolvable. But on the other hand, it also creates problems for organizations because suddenly their products don't work anymore. Um, and through modularity, um, you affect your product. Now, yeah, Apple's not always modular. Now, another example for you to understand modularity is actually what we're doing here in, my, in WBS, right? Um, this is a module. We're actually following a module. Now, it's an elective module. Um, so I looked at the page uh, this afternoon. And typically, you know, year one, study eight core modules. They're core modules. You need to do them but they're still called modules, so they're independent, right? Every course is independent, yet many interdependencies in between. So in this module here, we have many interdependencies between the different lectures, right? We're trying to sort of follow up on that, and therefore the module works, hopefully. Um, but, you know, if you follow my module, uh, that doesn't affect you in any way, hopefully also not your performance, well maybe it does, in your, let's say, accounting model or finance uh, module or whatsoever. Um, so yeah, um, modularity also in your teaching uh, to a certain extent. Well, cars also have uh, modularity if you see that, right? They're built in a modular way. Um, every part, you know, you could sort of take the car apart and then suddenly see that it's actually a modular design. Uh, it's been modular created uh, like that. So yeah, modular, integral, etc. Now, why am I discussing all this? Why am I boring you with all this, right? It's so self-explainable, yeah, that's true. But actually, this thing that we've been discussing the uh, past couple of weeks is why we're talking about this. All these digital technologies built on the principle of modularity, right? So device layer, this thing, module, connected through that thing there at the top, the networking, module, right? Module again. Now I'm using PowerPoint here, or Mac if you want, that's our surface layer, another module, a software module, and then I'm using oh, PowerPoint, that's the application, the content layer over there. So boom, 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 four sort of modular systems that you can combine through this digital technology. It didn't used to be the case, right? Um, it didn't used to be that layered. So through this layering, through this digitalization, therefore we're now talking so much about modularity. 
Um, so yeah, you basically see it in the last lecture. This was my own research, right? Trying to build a modular system. Uber, Netflix, uh, bus tickets, all of that is a modular design. Modular apps, uh, modular movies if you want. Modular cabs if you want in that system. Um, here, another example of the past week here, modular cars, completely modular. This was our Amazon example, right? Suddenly a phone is now connected to a watch, to this online pickup thing, to these boxes. The digitalization has suddenly created all these connections between things that used to be independent, that used to be not related with each other, right? So suddenly a phone and a watch or a phone and a drone can be connected as a modular system. They're a modular system now through these digital technologies, through these interfaces and standards. And that's important to understand because you can then start questioning also, what are the limits to this system, right? What are the limits of what I can take into my uh, system or what are the limits that I can see as part of my business, as part of what I need to take account in uh, when I'm thinking about strategy. Similar example here, right? Threatless, we've been talking about that. Uh, T-shirt and then a modular design. You have other people create the designs for you. This was my whole modular thing, right? 10 apps connected to each other that are all created by different organizations. And actually, I was, uh, I was connecting them a little bit as well through my usage of them. Um, this blah, blah, blah. Organizations suddenly then, therefore, this, uh, um, therefore inter-organizational collaboration is becoming important because suddenly Netflix can upload its, um, its movies on AWS through this internet modular system, right? So any questions so far on this? Yeah. When it comes to the more uh, modular uh, environment that we find ourselves in, do you mm -hmm. think that's entirely the result of specialized in one thing, so being very good at making screens but very bad at making screens. Perfect example, yeah. So one of the things of that results from modularity or that creates towards modularity is specialization by firms. Uh, firms specialize in certain elements and basically outsource or get the other products elsewhere from and that is a dynamic affected by digitalization. So as a result of it, you could start doing it because you don't need to integrate everything. Um, but on the other hand, um, yeah, it's also, um, it's also something that organizations do because they want to focus on what they're good at, right? So for example, Tesla, right? Another example, Tesla doesn't create its own batteries. It, you know, it has no knowledge of batteries, doesn't know how to do that. So it gets them elsewhere, but it's very good at, you know, digitalizing um, um, the car, electricity, perf you know, making sure that you have high efficiency use, so it's specializing on that, but it's not specializing on creating batteries um, because it says, well, that's out of my, out of my league. I'm not going to focus on that. Um, to me, it's a support function, if you like. It's a support function, um, and I'm focusing on other things. Oh, well, yeah, good example. Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, by the way, just to get you back into it, uh, right, modularity, it really changed my life. Because suddenly everywhere I look, it's modular, right? This whole room is modular, if you start thinking about it. Um, I have a video later on where I thought it was modular. Um, so then I was talking to my girlfriend about it, and she was very annoyed by it. Um, so we'll come later. But yeah, you suddenly it's, you, switch your, you switch your frame and thinking, wow, a lot of things are modular, actually. And so, yeah, you can't see it anymore. So you can't see it differently anymore. So, um, but yeah. Also, there are many things that are non uh, that are that are non-modular. Like you know, a typical example is this Apple, right? Um, you can't change the keyboard. My keyboard is crashing nowadays. So if you get weird emails from me, it's because my keyboard, uh, the butterfly dam system, is breaking down. So I need to get that checked. They need to replace the keyboard, which I can't do myself because it's not a modular keyboard, right? So I can't can't just add a new one in. Um, but hey, uh, typically Android is seen much more as a modular system and this is a design matrix we call them where you can map um, the different components involved in, in the Android software and what you see here is that 
And the red squares are things that are very, uh, very dependent on each other, or sorry, independent on each other. So all of these blocks are sort of working independently. Um, no, sorry, the red squares are dependent. So here you have two modules, whereas here, that are working together, whereas here it's sort of all over the place. All right, so here it's much more modularized. So we make sure, okay, we keep that like that. Um, and there are certain benefits to this, right? So um, a modular system creates flexibility, it's evolvable, it's unbounded. Suddenly the system is open, you can add stuff to it. But there are also benefits to this, right? For example, quality of integration, that's what our friends at Apple are known for. Um, it's very quality integrated. There's a lot of control and, and it's also bounded. So as an organization, you make the decisions on what is in and out of the, uh, of the system. So this we have seen here, but now how do you achieve uh, modularity? Um, basically, two, two steps, there are a little bit more, but two steps. You create visible design rules, a, uh, for example, a visible interface. Um, and you create certain hidden design parameters within modules. So here's another, here's my example, right? This one is visible, USB, that's the visible interface. And here, what happens inside this thing, I have no clue. I don't know what they do, how it's been created, um, so that is hidden. But therefore, you become very dependent on this, uh, on this visible element. So um, back to the definition and the theory. Um, it's about the architecture. Those are the words to remember, right, for the exam as well. Architecture, interfaces, and standards. Now, um, architecture, which modules are part of the system and what are the functions? Interface, how do modules interact, including how they fit together, connect, and communicate? The USB standard, for example, right? That explains how modules interact, including how they fit together, connect, and communicate. And standards for testing, modules conformity and benchmarking performance so that you can compare them. So, um, you, would you like to give me an example of a modular system? Yeah. Uh, a, supermarket. a supermarket, great. And why is that an example of a modular system? Because it has a lot of modules, for example, uh, food, different types of food. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So they all put together and create a supermarket. Yes, indeed. So that is one way. So we can look at the supermarket as its products within it, right? And all of the products function independently. So I can buy bread, but I don't have to buy cheese, right? So those are the modules. That's one way. So you've defined the system. Can we extend this system with other modules if we want? What are other modules in between? Yep. There's like different, not only different types of foods that you can like swap out, um, but also like different other things yep. that you can integrate in that. Indeed, we can extend it with other shops as well in it. We have a car park, a lot of these companies outsource their car park monitoring. Car park monitoring, we outsource that, so we make that a module thing. We don't do it ourselves, right, as a supermarket, we just put it over there. Uh, the cashier system, right, that's another module within it. Um, the aisles, by the way, tend to be sort of modules themselves as well, right? So if you go to buy, uh, let's say, yogurt, it's typically near the milk because you probably need those things at the same time or so, right? So we're not going to go running through the supermarket all the way. Um, so yeah, great example. Other examples that you have? I like, by the way, that you came with a supermarket. That's always the easiest thing. Anything else? Yeah? Uh, a mall. A mall? A mall. Yeah, sure. Sure. And you can add different aspects to it, so a skating rink or, or no, water, like a swimming pool. Good. Yeah, sure. Okay, a mall, I like that, yeah. The way I dress this morning, uh, I, can, like, I can choose my pants basically independently. Like, if I don't want to be stylish or anything, like Perfect. I can give a crap about that. Like, yep. I can wear a sweater, I can wear a t-shirt, I can wear different types of jeans, and those don't have to fit with my top. Very nice, right? Clothing, that's a good way, yeah. Very nice. Stuff, for example, then you can move your chair, but its function itself as well. 
Yes, indeed. So buildings in general, uh, you could be right. So we can remove certain things. Yeah. That's true. But then, you know, I can't remove this chair here, right? Yeah, it's stuck. It's oh, yeah. It's, it's somewhere in between. If I bring a screwdriver, I may take it out again. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and now they're also adding a part to this building. So a building that was once finished now is modular again. So it really depends. And this is why this is so... Um, important is it depends again on the perspective that you take on the boundaries that you put around the system. Couldn't programming in itself be an example of modularity? Yep. There you're like integrating a lot of interchangeable modules. Mm -hmm. uh, programming itself could be seen as uh, as a modular system although it really um, dif it differs between languages right? Mm -hmm. So for example Python um, or R those tend to be very modular software codes because you can add stuff and you can even connect it to other systems whereas for example um, yeah um, I think C used to, is not really uh, not really modular and then they created C++ which is modular um, so therefore um, that differs again between languages but yeah software coding could be one but it, yeah it's really different right um, certain for example um, let's say the software code being written to iOS um, that's a very integrated thing. I cannot change it easily. Although the software code may itself be changeable, then the boundaries are governed by the, by the organization. But the important thing to remember is that it's really about you stating what are the system boundaries, right? Um, so you need to be very clear on that when, when you're doing this. So everything can be a system um, to a certain extent, but as you define it. So um, this is a, a three-piece suit. I like that example, right? A three-piece suit. Now, I want to take this off. This guy over here, he's giving me this mic, so now I can't take this off anymore. So he's become part of my system, and now I can't change it anymore. So I'm heating up here, right? It's super warm um, because of this jacket, but hey, I can't do it, so just got to keep it on. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to give you like a seven-minute break just to calm down of this stuff. A uh, 10 minute break and then we're gonna continue, okay? Uh, so please stick with me and uh, see you back at 3.43. So <laughs> All right, we're gonna start again. So um, who's been having some, uh, some life-changing experiences from this lecture already? <coughs> been to our modular bathrooms here? <coughs> um, those kinds of things. Anyway, Again, as you start thinking about it, um, you will see that more and more stuff is modular and that the strategy that organizations follow tends to be very much affected by these, uh, by these different parts of, uh, of, of these modular systems. So, you know, um, here are the recent Apple products. Um, you can see that they look a li little bit alike, right? Uh, although they have some changes, change in camera, for example. Um, um, so that's the hardware part of things, uh, but there's also the software, that's also this layer thing where too they can appropriate modularity. Um, so, yeah, if we start looking at these projects, uh, right, they're built out of modules to a certain extent. You have the screen, charger, audio input, audio output, buttons, speakers, all of those sort of you know, different modules, and then they're all integrated typically within the system by this chip and the software that is uh, within that. And now, strategically, how come that Apple does this so well and makes so much, uh, has such a big competitive advantage over us, is because they are sort of the governance, they are the, the, the system designer, we call them. Uh, the system designer of this system, they design it. And they typically use these proprietary standards, right? Which means they own it and that they make the decisions on them. Um, so they cannot be changed by other organizations. So although Apple doesn't make this camera, right? Um, it does control how it functions within the system. Um, how, how it's been used, for example, in the photo app or that kind of stuff, right? So the strategic way of thinking about this is that you want to control the elements that connect these different modules, right? You want to control these interfaces. Uh, you want to control how stuff is working together. Um, well, and you may, you know, you can make a lot of money also out of just being a module provider. Uh, that's perfectly fine. 
Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's beneficial if you are able to control this design because then you are also, um, yeah, you're in power here, right? Um, so, you know, they've been deciding that this little bit here should be taken off and therefore they are affecting all of these people that create these other modules to say, okay, now I want you to do it like this. Uh, and if you're not going to do it, um, I'm going to ask somebody else. And, you know, if you look over the design uh, of, uh, of the different things, and it's very nice on the Apple website, by the way, you can compare these, right, uh, for when you're buying them. Um, but it gives you a good picture because here's the, uh, the XR, um, you know, height 594, uh, 594. Here, iPhone 11, 594, and then the Pro, uh, 11 Pro, is 567, uh, which is sort of the newer one, right? It's smaller, it's a little... So you can probably expect that the next first iPhone is going to be the same height because that will be, then be sort of the XR, and then they approve on that, and then they create a new one. So why do they do that, of course, is when they launch this, and we pay 1,300 pounds or whatsoever for this thing, uh, right? We pay that and then they can use this design to create the very first new one and then at the same time develop already um, the, the sort of the next after that design. Um, so they are using modularity in that. Now another thing of course is the color. That's also something modular you can choose. That's actually your modularity. So suddenly you're the system designer, right? Um, uh, that you can pick, you know, black if you're manly or white if you're me. Um, Oh, actually, this was the old one from my girlfriend, so I could just uh, get it from her. Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, great. Here you see basically how they add modularity in this. Now, there's much more to the system, again, because I am placing now, as the system designer of these slides, I am now placing what I want you to think about, right? The, the system that I want you to think about. So, you know, if you look at this, you can also look at this, right? This is, again, this proprietary interface by Apple, right, this thing, um, this, uh, this connection. But they also have added Bluetooth, right? That's another interface that they use to connect to other products, um, like for example, uh, headphones or speakers, right? Um, and now, what is interesting here, and I don't know if you noticed, but this was sort of, I think, the, X, the, the, the seven, and this was the six or so, I'm not sure about this, but the six still had this nice thing here, right? The audio jack here, so that you can actually connect stuff to it. Um, now this one, they removed the standard interface, uh, this interface, right? The three millimeter audio jack interface um, that we have. They removed it, so suddenly, you know, this is not anymore, and you're relying on Bluetooth now. Now that is smart, right, that they do that, and one of the things that they do it is they want to make this a little bit thinner, but that, that's what they're saying to you, right? That's what they want you to believe. Yeah, 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 we're, we don't want that in. But no, no, no. They want to control over the system, right? So I had this great Beats that I had, right? I really loved it. And suddenly, you know, you get this new, not the iPhone, but in this case, this one, right? Oh, no, this still has it. Anyway, you know, you could have this um, where you connect it through this, right? Um, but then they change it, and then this product is worthless. You have to buy a new one, you know, so... I went looking online, great Louis Vuitton, <laughs> uh, 880 pounds, here you go. But I actually went for this one, uh, but still 270 pounds out of my pocket just to make sure that I can listen music, uh, right? Um, so they're doing that very smartly of connecting that um, so that they know, okay, I'm changing that. But again, they're also connecting them to other products, right? So one of the things is, that suddenly all of the headphones that you can buy from Sony and whatsoever, you know, um, they also need to adapt to Bluetooth, right? So they get control over the system. Um, but other things is, right, for example, this selfie thing, right? Remember that? We all had that? Gone, right? That was also another thing. They wanted to control the hardware. You could always use that via this audio jack. Uh, but yeah, I don't see selfie sticks anymore when I'm on holiday or not as many as, uh, or they w go through this proprietary standard by Apple, right? So you have to buy this expensive thing from Apple, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I understand what you mean when you talk about like each uh, module section, like the screen, which one design. Yeah. But then um, you say that you want to control how everything is working together. 
but surely like they don't operate in isolation. Like for example, the, you can't like the button doesn't have a function if it doesn't have anything together. So aren't you just supporting the notion that being integral is better than being modular? Um, I definitely support that notion. Being integral inside one module, I would perfectly ha be happy with that. Yeah, um, but. So this is very important, the question that you asked, so thank you for that. You know, it really depends on where do you draw the boundaries around the system or around the module, right? So a module in itself could be a system if we see it like that. Um, so, um, um, you know, this is also a system right here. This is a system right here. We have an iPad here that's another system. And suddenly, these are two systems, right? The iPad is a system and the Apple is a system, or the, the MacBook is a system. But now, we can also integrate them together within the same Apple system. Um, but that doesn't really affect the integrated way in which the, uh, in which the, um, in which the iPad works. So, this is a module and this is a module. They work perfectly fine on their own, but you can also connect them. Yeah, um, does that answer your question? So again, really important, therefore, who controls this system? Who controls the boundaries? Harry? I think it, it kind of raises the same question. Yeah. Uh, like, what was the frame of the modularity in the think of for Apple? And uh, the way I answered it was uh, it allowed them to launch their AirPods, and their AirPods sell uh, went up like yep. uh, crazy. So basically, Apple is a company with the super modular thing, and AirPods is like one module of it. But the phone in itself, I see it as something super integral. Like, uh, you can't change anything. Uh, like about which? Yeah, so. Yeah, as a user, for you, it's a block, right? Um, for, them in their production, it's for them in their production, yeah. As a designer, they make all these systems, yeah. But yeah, so um, the integration of Bluetooth was very important to them, right? Um, so it allowed them to create these AirPods, get a part of the market. Um, before that, they, of course, bought Beats, um, right? But now that they've created this Bluetooth uh, connection, for example, you know, you also then suddenly need to think about a whole different ecosystem system of other things suddenly that also use this standard, right? That suddenly become integrated in what you already, uh, in, into your iPhone uh, ecosystem. So similarly, right, so Sonos suddenly, you know, becomes more important to, uh, to this, to us as users as well, because we cannot connect this three millimeter audio thing anymore. So therefore, we, uh, we need to connect with our Sonos. So to some extent, you could say that Apple is very good in triggering other elements in the system around them to become popular. Sonos, his competitive advantage, is very much relying on what Apple is doing, not only with their products, uh, uh, but also yeah, with their, the modules inside and the interfaces that connect them. Any other questions? This is cool, yeah. 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 I see. So a very important difference here with the AirPod example that you now get to, right? In terms of hardware, that's a module, right? It's a complementary product, as you're saying. But they are controlling the software, of course, that is running these AirPods, right? Uh, and that allows them to connect to certain things, you know, uh, which other systems can it connect to, uh, always via Bluetooth or there are other ways. Um, so the hardware-software divide, um, I wouldn't say that the AirPods are very integral to the Apple system, right? We can also change them with other things. Um, although, you know, within the AirPod, that's, that's uh, another thing. Uh, anyway, but, you know, if you look inside the Apple products, we are talking about them as very integrated. But it may be that, for example, again, the battery, right? Not produced by Apple, different company 
but Apple makes the decisions on how it wants it, how large or small or whatsoever. Um, so similar for the touch screen, right? Also not created by them, but they create sort of the framework in which it should fit. They are the system designer. So um, although we're talking now about Apple as an integrated, integrated product, if you look at the particular hardware things, not that integrated, but they've designed it as such and particularly the software is important there. That's what is making it an integrated system. Any other questions? Cool. Um, so, nice segue. Um, if, you, uh, if you, for example, then design for Apple, right? You create designs, you should look at that. If you have never done it, go to the website, it's crazy, right? Human interface guidelines. They've created a whole set of guidelines that you need to follow for your app to be part of the system, right? So uh, they're very good at designing these interfaces and trying to get you into a certain way. So um, they are very good in trying to get this quality integration to control and bound it in a certain way. That's what they're doing very well. They are creating, although modular, right? Modular apps, but they are trying to make an integral system. So um, yeah, this, uh, this thing has benefits on both sides and you're trying to get a little bit of both. As always, you're flipping back a little bit between modular and integral. Um, now, there are many downsides as well. Um, I didn't fill them in. Any downsides on the modularity? It tends to get a lot slower because you, like especially for kind of software, um, yeah. or Android phones a lot have, sitting as an Android user myself, so, um, it gets quite a bit slower because you have sure. these different types and it's mostly like an overflow, so sort of integral kind of parts and products because mm -hmm. everything is yeah. designed to be dependent on one another and kind of complementing one another as well, it usually tends to work a bit better in terms mm -hmm. of speed and within that confined space. Yeah. Um, so modular stuff sometimes um, breaks down or gets a bit slower because it's so True. Yeah, situation. typically, yeah, and it requires a lot of updating as well all the time, right? Yeah. There's more proliferation of different variations. If you have lots of different combinations of, of uh, modules within a product, mm -hmm. it's Indeed, yeah, indeed. I think from a user perspective, it's also like a bit more work. So they have the choice, but also they need to make their choice and get this one that they want. And that's where yeah. I think it's easier to then take over the system than the other way around. Yeah, true. Uh, definitely, sometimes it's easier if you use an integrated system because it tends to be working together. So yeah, that goes a little bit into what you're saying and what you're saying as well you lose a little bit of the control, right? It goes in all of the directions. You see that as well on YouTube, right? YouTube is a modular system, by the way, right? We are uploading videos on it. They don't control what we're seeing, but therefore it's like sometimes it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's almost a jungle out there. There's so many crazy stuff there. And what do you need to choose? There are millions of options. What do I do? Um, so, yeah. You could probably make the argument that in the case of um, when it's more integral, that that because they've got more power over like controlling the system's boundary, that they can then demand higher prices from customers? Indeed, yeah, definitely. So is that a downside? Of integral, yeah. Because you can demand higher prices? Oh, well, I mean, from the user's perspective. Sorry. Oh, from a user's perspective, yeah, definitely. There's a downside from the user perspective, yeah. To some extent, you could just, by the way, if you just flip these around, there's your answer, right? So uh, quality integration is a benefit. Uh, and therefore, quality integration is a downside of a, of a modular system, right? It's sometimes hard to make sure that the quality is integrated, therefore you get slow systems. So just on the quality integration, it's you, you're arguing that it, there's a higher quality because they can make sure that the parts interact with each other well. Yeah. But then if I take, let's say, like desktop PCs or if I take cars, they're, they're almost entirely modular. Different mm -hmm. things made, made by different people are specialized and they almost always work better than the integrated so I can buy a desktop made up, not by Apple, let's say, 
made up of different parts, like an uh, like oh. Nvidia graphics card and all these sort of things, for the same price or less, and it can do more. So when you say quality integration, is is it in the quality or in the integration? Or both? Um, it's a little bit into both. Let me get back to. You want to answer him or? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I think a lot, I mean, obviously there is also the um, just pricing strategy with Apple that kind of decides on the price, but I think a lot of there is also kind of like the cross-border, so going back to kind of the Apple AirPods and uh, just Apple phones, mm -hmm. um, because of how they're integrated, like you just flip open the AirPods and they connect automatically, mm -hmm. because it's a integral design which makes it easier, i.e. for quality, from what I understand. Yeah. That, but you can still use the AirPods with a Android phone, but the pairing process isn't as easy because it's kind of more. There um, you go. Yeah. So not designed to be integrated within that specific ecosystem. True. So you, yeah, there. To one extent, you're saying yeah, you could b create a whole, a very good system in a modular way, right? You can take the AirPods and it will work nicely, but it's not always as flexible or as easy to do. And don't forget, you know, don't remember my setup with eight dongles. Once yeah. this was a perfectly fine modular system that I created at no, home. No, no, but but I understand that, and that makes sense to me. But my point was more about when you say benefits are quality integration. It's not so much that they're higher quality, it's the quality of the integration. Oh, very good point. Yeah. Then let's say control over quality integration. Yeah, that was what I should have been saying. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's control over quality. There, you can create a very high quality modular system. It's about the control. Thank you very much. Yeah. I just misreferenced my own thesis. So, uh, hey, tops for me. Stan. Yeah, um, just to s something to say about that is, yes, you can create a computer that is better and maybe cheaper, but that requires quite a lot of expertise. And there's limited amounts. Yeah, but you could. But imagine your mom is trying to buy a computer. She might have a very difficult time. So she might just go to Apple, pay the better price, and she'll have a, something that is better than just buying a desktop from another company that is more modular. In a way, so yes, I can understand why you can see it's better quality, but it requires expertise to get that quality. Perfect. So, just to sort of get your head around this, there's no better, worse whatsoever, right? It's really, you know, they're worth, there's in both strategies can be very functional, and uh, there is a lot of money to be made. It can be very strategic to be modular, it can be very strategic to be integral. Um, for both, I could say that there are organizations that have created a competitive advantage uh, with that. Um, but yes, so let's continue. So um, here's actually interesting, Baldwin and Clark, and many executives will have to learn what computer executives have long known, right? 1997, just before we're starting this whole drive of digitalization, right? More and more you need to start thinking about these, uh, about these digital products. Um, evolving into, into, uh, into larger ecosystem of things. Now, um, before we go on to this la last part of this, uh, of, this, um, uh, of this ecosystem thing, I need to go to my video that I promised you. Um, so yeah, um, this other day I was out with my girlfriend, right? Uh, we had to do something fun because I've been teaching so much, she said. So uh, we went to the following. Right.
So I was sitting there, and then afterwards, you know, we came out and I said, hey, that was a great modular system. And my girlfriend freaked out. Um, whole weekend I had to be in the doghouse because apparently I had been thinking about work again. Um, but hey, is this a modular system or not? Let's think about this. So if we let's say we block this out, right? Yeah. We have at least this. It's not necessarily the same because your the entertainment value you're talking maybe comes from the co the choreography and yeah. that sort of thing. I, mean, I guess you can argue it because it's an art form, but I would say it's not it's more interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. It needs each other to be what it is. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's true. So, what kind of system? Like a modular system, because if you take one thing out, it might still be ballet, but it wouldn't be the same ballet. It is. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. True, yeah, uh, true, totally true. Um, now, you know, you could take certain, oh, yeah? So I, was, I don't know that much about ballet, but if it, and you could argue that it's integral in the sense that I, they probably all train together and practice together. Mm -hmm. And so if you say if you take one couple out and replace it with another one, yes, it would probably still be ballet and it would probably still be the same routine, but it wouldn't be the same thing that you're getting because of the interconnectivity between those two people. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. I think the whole point of a modular system is that you can take something out and put something else in and it's not the same. Like the, that flexibility is like you don't have to be able to replace it with something different and the same thing to happen for something to be modular. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yes. Like, for, for, to, if you said, oh, it's not modular because if you took something out, it would be different. That doesn't mean it's not modular. Uh huh. Okay. Like if I, if I wanted two different the ability to choose between two different cameras in my phone the fact that i get a lot higher quality with the other one doesn't mean it's not modular but true you're still, you're still getting a camera true so if, yeah if you replace the camera with a banana you've still got something in your phone but yeah but if you replace the ballet dancer with another ballet dancer you've still got a ballet dancer true but you know, okay wait wait, wait 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 before before we lose the class here with uh, bananas and uh, and ballet you know, you can take stuff out, replace it maybe, but at some point you lose something, right? If I start dancing there, um, that would be a little bit crazy, um, although I try. Uh, but um, so, yeah, you're sort of trying to go on this balance, right? And actually there's another person here, Hans van Manen, who would be sort of directing that all, right? That would be the system designer. And basically he's saying who should be involved. By the way, uh, I wasn't that... Uh, 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 known in ballet, but you know, this is the core person here. Um, she was very important. Um, sometimes she was even alone on the stage, right? Uh, apparently she was the core of the system, right? She was very important there, uh, which is great. So one of the things that I'm trying to say as an organization, as a firm, you're balancing this thing, right? You're balancing on this, on this, on this sort of thing. Um, and therefore you need to take account of this internal and external what do i see as part of the system what do i control right again in the ballet there's nothing there right in the external sort of thing but i'm there as as an as a person watching it i'm also influencing it um yeah many stories about that anyway suddenly as an organization you're sort of opening up as well um in this uh in this system so you know lego where we started with because trying to get my uh, my my thing you know, they also have this website, ids.logo, you can add stuff, right? You can make your own designs. I uh, like this one, the Big Bang Theory, uh, right? But also this one, Woman in NASA, created by people outside of the organization, right? Lego is very good at getting creativity from outside its organization. Uh, here, Leicester Square, uh, created, right, outside the organization. So very exciting, right? Because suddenly through this modular system, there, are the people that are contributing for free to Lego, free ideas, free creativity, uh, uh, are, that comes from modularity, right? 
So um, a little bit more technical, we're then going, um, right? This is basically what I want you to remember. This picture, this is the Tivana, should be standing here, but my slides crashed. Tivana et al. 2010, right? Uh, this is the thing. Um, oh, it wasn't there actually. Uh, anyway, Tivana, you see? Platform, interfaces, module. Environment, nice, external thing, right? Environment, it's affecting it. Thank you, Mr. Tivana. And then, you know, there are competing ecosystems behind this. So this modularity, you see that especially in this uh, digital platforms and ecosystems, suddenly things that are connected become this ecosystem. They're affecting each other, right? Uh, and there are competing ecosystems behind this. Now, you know, then you get this kind of crap with a lot of organizations that suddenly seem not very related, but actually are very related, right? In different types of platforms. You have product platforms, social exchange platforms, market platforms, innovation platforms, different types of platforms that all sort of form their own ecosystem um, that become interrelated. A uh, small example right here, right? Our phone um, right here. We have, this is the platform, right? So let's call that the platform for now. Um, then you have modules, like their own app, for example, which tends to come integrated as well. Uh, but also, you know, uh, Google Maps is there. Um, then actually Google Maps is its own system again, right? Because they have these uh, TripAdvisor and Yelp things, right? That connect to that, to that environment. So that's actually, to some extent, it's a competing ecosystem because they have their own sort of app as well. So there you go. Um, then it also depends, okay, if I now just look at another ecosystem competing, you have the Huawei stuff, right? Which actually looks very familiar. Uh, so, you know, it again really depends on where you draw the boundaries of the system, right? Where do you draw the boundaries of the competing ecosystem? And actually, they are overlapping sometimes. So, you know, Google is very reliant on Apple for its for its system, right? For its success, because this app is on this phone, and you know, they also have an Android phone, of course, but you know, they're also very reliant on the Apple users. And actually, at the same time, they're competing with Apple with this, with their own app, right? Which is crappy and nobody uses it. Uh, so, uh, other modules, and you can pick and choose. So, as an organization, through the digitalization, this is important to understand, your uh, strategic competitive advantage not only depends on you trying to govern right um, your own ecosystem but you're very much affected also by the other organizations governing their ecosystems as well so suddenly you start thinking about okay is Apple then affected by Yelp for example well to some extent these organizations don't compete at all they do very different things but on the other hand, Yelp is very important for Google Maps. And for me, Google Maps is a very important module on this phone uh, because I use it all the time, right? So then th you see where I'm going, that the system and everything that's involved um, is suddenly much more complex than, uh, than if you would just look at the phone. Um, so yeah, to, to, to sort of think about that, okay, again, you know, if you just take then RunKeeper as a system and we don't look at the phone anymore, there's less complexity here, right? Because it's more of an integrated system, but they have a connection with uh, Spotify as well. So um, that's, uh, that's the thing. So yeah, then you suddenly see that something like Wikipedia relates to Salesforce, relates to Airbnb whatsoever. So uh, there are many connections. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, two different types of platforms, um, platform as market. Um, that's an easy way to sort of differentiate between platform as market, which is more of the economic perspective, right? We have our Tinder, which is sort of an economic perspective that's interesting. Um, <laughs> there's an economy on uh, Tinder, by the way. I don't know if you realize, but yeah. Uh, uh, but hey, uh, also innovation ecosystem, right? That's a technical perspective. Um, 
So, you know, we, we know a lot about platforms, so I'm not going to explain all of this to you, but, you know, users, suppliers, right? That sort of mix going on. Here you see that market innovation ecosystem. But actually, these two are also a little bit related. The success of Tinder is very much related to the success of Apple or Android or whatsoever, actually to the combination of the two. Um, so, yeah. Now, as I was saying, um, the, the governance, so to say, so who controls these interface, who decides, who makes the decisions, um, it's really related to the architecture, uh, right, decisions that you make. So the decomposition, the modularity, and the design rules, that's what we've been discussing so far, right? What do you pick as a standard? Which things do you involve? Um, but then there's also the governance um, who makes, who has decision rights? Who is the control mechanisms? Who's the proprietary versus shared? Uh, who makes those calls? Is it proprietary, is it shared? So, you know, for example, Yelp um, is really successful because of Google, but suddenly Google can make a lot of decisions about how Yelp interfaces with its system. So therefore you can question who is now in control here? Who has the power of this? Um, so yeah, typically you want to sort of differentiate between the governance on that side and the architecture on that, and these are affecting each other. So Google's, um, Google's let's say, decomposition in the, in the maps, for example, affects Yelp. Um, Google's decision on who can add stuff to Google affects Yelp, but also Yelp's decisions who can affect Google, right? So two-way street. Um, so, another way in which you can look at this is that the platform architecture is, you know, this, this one, integral modular, uh, and the governance uh, is, tends to be differentiated between centralized and decentralized. Again, this is the Tibana uh, uh, article, so definitely have a read about this. Now, uh, we're almost getting there, so um, we're almost done. But, you know, these arrows, right, they're very important. Um, why? why? Why the arrow is very important? Remember, very first lecture we started with this? No, no. Why are they important? Dynamics, Dynamics thank you very much. Dynamics, boom. <laughs> Dynamics. You're moving there, right? You can go back and forth all the way you want. You can go left, right, central, decentralized. You're moving between these two things. You're moving between them. So the dynamics are important. You can change a little bit between more integral, more modular, etc. cetera. Um, that is what is possible now through, the digitalized, through digital technologies. It's easier to do so um, to a certain extent. And to that, we finish with the final article, uh, Gazavne and Hemfritsen, 2013. Um, that how do you then control such a platform, right? How do you balance uh, this platform control and this architecture, right? What do you do to make sure that you have some sort of power over this ecosystem? And um, one of the things that I should definitely recommend to you is to go to that article and try, or give it a read, please. Please do so, and I, you're all here. I, for the exam, I suggest that you give it a read, okay? Um, I really suggest to give it a read for the exam. Um, and uh, yeah, so give it a read. Um, you should really give it a read. <laughs> All right. So but now how do you read such a thing? How do you read it? Um, and this is my sort of my, my guide to reading. Start with the title, okay? This, a lot of people don't do this. I never did it. So Balancing platform control and external contribution in third party developing the boundary resources model. There are certain terms here that are apparently important. Something with balancing, control, con and boundary resources in third party. That's important. Boundary resources, you probably need to understand. So you highlight that, right? Then you go through this. Um, you read the abstract and highlight the concepts that you need to know, right? So blah, 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 blah. Third party development. However, to this end, so I'm looking now, I'm going to show you how, ah, 
here, boundary resources, that was important. I knew that from the title. Here it is, boundary resources. And then it says design and use, and then resourcing and securing. Apparently, these are important terms, so that's also why you highlight them. So you're highlighting them, um, then you have a look at the keywords, then you do this, I, I, you know, you speed read. So you go through it from back to forth very quickly, just to get a, an understanding of what do I need to know, what is actually in this article, and then you carefully read it uh, again. Then you go through it and you try to learn it, right? But the most important part about reading such an article and preparing for it is to look at what are the keywords and what are the things that we've been discussing in the lecture. And actually, you know, um, the keywords, you know, third party control because of boundary resources, resourcing and securing. Those would be the three keywords that I think I would have when I go through this and which I think are important for this sort of thing. Because boundary resources allow you to control the architecture and the governance, right? They give you control over this. And if you look at the article, um, they say resourcing, which is important, resourcing, process action of increasing platform scope and diversity. So trying to get the scope and the diversity of the platform to increase it. You're resourcing, you're resourcing others to, um, to do something with your platform. That's what they're saying, right? So certain actions to make sure that others contribute to your platform. Um, that is resourcing. Now the counter of that is securing, which is, okay, how can I control um, how can I control uh, the, the, the stuff that people are adding to the platform? So if we take the Bluetooth example again, right, that is both an action of resourcing, because suddenly you're saying to other people, okay, if you want to connect to my system, you have to use Bluetooth and you have to comply to those standards, right? But on the other hand, it's also securing them because you cannot connect this three millimeter audio jack in it anymore, right? So it's resourcing and securing. Any questions about this? I know I went a little fast, so uh, please feel free uh, to discuss it next week again when we're here also with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the practice exam and give it a read at home and then I will go over it again. Um, this I'm gonna skip, these are the examples from them. We're not interested in that. And then we're going through the case. Are we ready? Or do we need a break and then do the case? But then we have less time, maybe. All right, let's do a five-minute break. Five minutes, just briefly, so that we can just climate a little, and then we're going to read it, discuss the case. So see you back at 28, 428.